I'm filming all of this and I'm sending in. I'm calling the media over here now because this is ridiculous. Blatant disregard for our community. You feel helpless, but you feel that something need to be done. Freemanstown is a, is, is a place to be proud of. Freemanstown history is Houston's history, Texas history, United States history, and world history. We feel that this Freemanstown is just as important. In 1865, after the news of the Emancipation Proclamation spread, the citizens of Freedmanstown moved to Houston. Yet due to segregation, the only spot they could settle into was where Allen Parfait Village now stands. So Freedmanstown is a community of African American ex-slaves. After the emancipation of 1865, they were given this marshy, flooded land near the Buffalo Bayou, and it was uninhabitable. Um, that's why it had been left vacant for so long. And not only did they, you know, survive and get past malaria and all these other harsh living conditions, they actually really thrived in that neighborhood. Um, they were the best artisans, they were the best craftsmen. So we had, you know, all of these people with these wonderful skills who said, you know what, we can make the best. We've been doing that for years. The town prospered to its peak until the local government became threatened by their success. Soon, Many black businesses, homes, and churches were displaced to make way for what they considered progress. As gentrification made its way, buildings like the Albert Thomas Convention Center, the Music Hall and Coliseum, and City Hall were built on land that belonged to Freedmanstown. Well, the gentrification of Freedmanstown didn't just start now. It began uh, at the turn of the 20th century when um, Moors began. They made this community so prosperous they, you know, they owned all their own businesses, the homes, the land. Oh, it was just really wonderful, you know. And uh, then uh, the threat came from the Caucasian, uh, uh, Caucasians in leadership here. You had the uh, unlawful taking of the land of the Moors to build what is known as Allen Parkway Village, and even before that, City Hall. See, Freedomstown is only 50% its original size today, but the, the government chewed up 50% of Freemanstown because the eastern boundary would extend all the way up to Travis Street downtown and as far north as Franklin Street where the Barbara Jordan Post Office was. So all that was Freemanstown as well. So when you look at the great loss in, in 1959, you had the uh, Gulf Coast Freeway coming through instead of going over Freemanstown, it ran through. Freemanstown and taking more land from the Moors here in the community. So gentrification it, it, today is nothing new to Freemanstown. It's, it's just... So Freemanstown um, initially had about five, over 500 structures. Um, and now over 500 of, of those structures, particularly um, historic homesteads, are gone. Essentially, uh, the majority of Freeman's town is, is now gone and now uh, considered to be midtown. Though time has passed, Freedman's Town has and continues its struggle to preserve its history, a history connected to many historical landmarks and features, but most recently, the destruction of hand-laid brick streets that former slaves paid more than a hundred years ago have stirred outrage among supporters of the town. This most recent incident that occurred in uh, late November, I filmed it. And then all this destruction of the brick streets. because you're tearing up our brick street. Where's the superintendent? Well, you need to call him. Y'all need to stop this. I'm calling the mayor's office because you're tearing up all our historic bricks. And this is a violation of federal law. This is against the Texas Historical Commission Code. You're not supposed to be doing this. Y'all tore up some of the bricks earlier. This is ridiculous. Blatant disregard for our community. This, look, at oh, over at the curb historic curve with the name of the street on it. Y'all done tow that up. Y'all need to Mayor Sylvester Turner since has addressed the situation and ordered the reinstallment of the bricks along with improved infrastructure. 
we don't always have the support of the city to say that we care about our history and that this is an important part of our history. It's a National Register Historic District. It is a national landmark. It should be preserved, it should be celebrated, especially one uh, of this caliber. It's very important that Houston begins to preserve uh, its history, especially the Moore history. Because you, when you want people to come here, Super Bowl or whatever, NCAA or NBA, whatever, what do you have to show them? You have to send them to Kima or Galveston, but you, you don't have anything here to, sh to show them, okay? So you want to uh, preserve as much as you can that remains of a great era, of a great people. There isn't much left. And we understand that there's a lot that we won't be able to get left, but I think it's very important that we preserve those homes that are there so that what we do have left is the spirit of freedom, this town and that pride. A lot of African Americans and a lot of Houstonians in general do not know that this place exists, do not understand how amazing it was to the, the architectural uh, design of the homes and uh, the rich history and the culture that is left, some of the idiosyncrasies that, that went on there, the churches, there's a Macedonia Baptist Church has been there 118 years and has survived not only Jim Crow, but also survived things as recent as Hurricane Ike. These are essential, essential to the education and the historical background of Houston. And those things have to be celebrated. Although Freedmanstown has been a nationally registered historical site for over 30 years and the largest intact freed slave settlement left in the entire nation, its official designation protects only 40 of the 80 blocks or more of the remaining Freedmanstown area. In order to protect the greater Freedmanstown community, more support is needed. It is an American treasure which promotes education, archaeological research, rich history, and pride.